Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, today I want to talk about another Russian achievement as it strives to have technological and industrial sovereignty as well as independence from the West. It's just been announced that Russia's taken the significant step towards eradicating its critical dependence on Western high-powered gas turbines. Now, the launch of a thermal power plant with a turbine developed and produced entirely in Russia marks a significant milestone. This is a unique technological achievement for the country, which has seemed pretty unattainable until recently. <clears throat> I mean, for decades, Russia has been reliant on imports from Germany and the United States for this type of equipment. Now, Russia has launched its first domestically produced high power gas turbine, the GTD-110M. Now, the turbine was installed in the third power unit of the Ardarnia thermal power plant, which was commissioned in the Krimsk region of Krasnodar Krai. Uh, President uh, Putin took part in the opening ceremony. Now, prior to this, Russia has been reliant on foreign manufacturers for turbines of this level and capacity. However, the Western manufacturers withdrew from the market, leaving Russia without access to these sort of turbines. Now, the development of the new production facilities and the achievement of the technological independence in this segment as a significant milestone, stated Mr. Putin. Quite right there. Now, Rostec, the Russian technical uh, industrial giant, highlights the key differentiators of high-powered gas turbine, the GT110M, in comparison to its international counterparts. These include its reduced weight and dimensions, as well as its high level of fuel efficiency. The production process makes use of cutting-edge developments and pioneering technologies, including the additive manufacturing of uh, combustion chamber components. Now, this engine is going to be employed in the gas turbine power plants and combined circle plants with a capacity of 115 megawatts. Now, previously, turbines of this sort of capacity had to be bought from Western companies, in particular from Siemens, GE and Alstom which decided under pressure from their governments to leave the country due to the conflict in Ukraine. Now, the first turbine, as I said, has been delivered and installed at the Andarnaya thermal power plant. The next three GTT-110 turbines will be manufactured and delivered in 25 to 26 for the modernisation of the Novokarsask uh, power plant. Now, the production plan is to release two such turbines a year. However, from 2028, UEC, which is United um, Electrical Combustion, part of Rostec, and plans to double the serial production to around four plants per year. This will be made possible by the, the construction of a new mechanical assembly plant in Rubinsk. Now, higher school of economics analysts have determined that Russia's reliance on imported gas turbines had reached 90% in 2022, and that made the country particularly vulnerable uh, in cases of energy security. I mean, when the two main suppliers, Siemens and General Electric, ceased their operations, they withdrew also from the joint ventures they'd set up. <clears throat> now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen on the right hand side. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all now just for watching because I value every viewer. Now, in the light of these circumstances, the task of import substitution for high-power gas turbines had become more urgent. I mean, Russia's only been able to manufacture low-power turbines, and previous attempts to develop their own high-power gas turbines hadn't been successful. So, the issue of the lack of high-power gas turbines has been identified for some time, and serious efforts have been made uh, to address it, but then, 2022, they went, so they had to... Forget the collaboration with Western partners like Siemens, who decided that you know, they wanted to keep their technology. So, Russia has now demonstrated that the course of action of being dependent on uh, the West is, doesn't work. And so, 
they started to carry out their own developments. And now we're seeing the results of that work, says Alexander Froloff, who's the deputy director of the National Energy Institute. He's also the editor of the industry of media, uh, Infotech. Now, in addition to Rostec, Power Machines is also developing 65 megawatt and 170 megawatt gas turbines. The Rostec turbine is relatively compact in size and Froloff believes that that power should not be limited for the task facing the industry. I mean, he also believes that the demand for turbines like that is going to be pretty high over the next 25 years as a significant number of power plants in Russia are getting on. They're ageing and they require modernisation or at least some replacement. I mean, plus, the growing demand for electricity is going to need for new gas power plants to be built. I mean, the total installed capacity of all power plants, that's not just gas power, is about 263 gigawatts. Of this, 30 gigawatts were constructed in the early 90s and in the early 2000s, and the other 50 gigawatts have been built since the 2010s. Now, the majority of the other plants are significantly older, with many constructed back in the Soviet days of the 1960s and 1970s. And some of these facilities are nearing the end of their operational lifespan and really require uh, either modernization or replacement. I mean, in general, power plants have a long service life. I mean, they're typically designed for more than five decades, but by 2030, Russia is going to have to adjust the issue of 100 gigawatt power plants. And that doesn't need, that need to be replaced, but they must ensure that they're properly maintained uh, or uh, certainly the equipment could be replaced. I mean, these are old and it's important to ascertain which can be modernised and which can operate efficiently and then need to be replaced. I mean, it's estimated that approximately half to two-thirds of these plants will still be or remain operational after 2030. However, by then the 2040s and 2050s, they'll need to be replaced. And it's evident that they're not solely gas power facilities, but there's also nuclear and power, coal power facilities. But gas power facilities now represent the majority as coal has been pretty much phased out. Meanwhile, of course, the demand for electricity in Russia is not decreasing, but increasing, and it's likely to reach 1,100 to 1,200 billion, yeah, I said billion, kilowatt hours by the end of the decade, according to the analyst. Now, this indicates that in addition to replacing the turbines at the existing plants, it's going to be necessary to build new plants and have more turbines. Accordingly, there's a possibility that the serial production of uh, new turbines is going to be insufficient to meet the existing demand. I mean, in 2028, only eight of these turbines will have been assembled at a rate of two per year. From 2028, the production will go up to four. So in other words, by 2030, they'll have built 18. Now, currently, the requirement for these turbines is at least 40 units. And that was the precise number that was agreed upon in 2022 when Russia and Iran reached a purchase agreement on turbines. So there's plans in place to modernise the plans and to produce new gas turbines. However, that still leaves uh, the Russian manufacturers are unable to produce the necessary equipment within the projected time frame. Then they're going to have to explore alternative options, potentially in countries such as Iran and China. Well, both members of BRICS or friendly relationships uh, and good trading partners. So there'll probably be a deficit of uh, gas turbines with their own production. And let's see if they can step up to the plate. I mean, you've got to remember the Russian market is substantial and there'll be numerous suppliers interested in selling their turbines. Well, not the West, of course. I mean, Siemens, <coughs> which was effectively forced to leave Russia by the German government, is not really happy with the current situation, says Frollo. I mean, they, they basically, there's 310 gas turbine units currently operating in Russia and each will require replacement at some time in the future. Now work that one out, 310. I mean, the cost of a single turbine is estimated between 3 and 4 billion rubles and that's about $5 million. So work that one out by 300 times and uh, you've got a figure that's uh, pretty substantial. So the potential to generate billions of dollars in revenue for 
turbine suppliers, and that doesn't include the cost of spare parts and scheduled repairs and maintenance. So Russia's really going to have to develop the capability to produce turbines with greater capacity and in numbers. I mean, prior to the spring 22, the conclusion to uh, purchase 40 gas turbines from Iran uh, with the import duty on the M70 gas turbines was uh, by the Iranian map now was lifted. So that's clear that Russia now understands it needs to buy them. And the Iranian turbines are actually pretty good. They have an output of uh, 185 megawatts compared to the 115 by the Russian turbine. Meanwhile, even the Siemens uh, turbines of greater capacity, which were installed uh, in Crimea when they got really upset about it, uh, are working perfectly. And they've now being copied by uh, power machines and they're looking to do the first serial model uh, by the end of this year. Plus, uh, Denis Maturov, who's the deputy Russian prime minister, announced in September that plans are being considered for the serial production of um, gas turbines with a capacity of 300 to 400 megawatts. Now, do remember, a gas turbine is a large, highly efficient piece of machinery, comparable in size to a small house, which could relatively meet the energy needs of a city, maybe obviously a small one. So the announcement of Rostec, uh, the first high-powered turbine, is a significant development. So we can now consider not only the possibility of replacing Western products, but also the potential for competing with the Western equivalents in their uh, own markets. I mean, that's a technological achievement. That's driving economic growth for the country, and that's only a particularly good thing. I mean, in the long term, there's a potential for Russia to export its gas turbines once it gets there. I mean, the post-Soviet space is a priority for many countries looking to uh, enhance their energy security, and Russia has a good relationship. And so these turbines could become a major export product. I mean, that's a long-term goal, of course. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed it, please help me by uh, clicking the thanks button. Don't forget the comments. Love to get your comments. Love to respond to your comments. And love to uh, engage with you. So I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Goodbye.